Have you considered redecorating? Don't look at me like that. It was just a suggestion. Chance Folly by Zilma Gorge. By the time she was 16, Mindva Yoros has been an unwel unwelcome guest in every shop and manor in Balmora. Sometimes she will take everything of value with him, other times she was enough to experience the pure pleasure of finding a way past the locks and traps. In every situation, she would leave a pair of ties in a prominent location as a calling card to let the owners know who had burgled them. The mysterious ghost became known to the locals as Chance, a typical conversation in Balmora at this time. My dear, whatever happened to that marvelous necklace of yours? My dear, it was taken by Chance. <laughs> The only time when Chance disliked her hobby that was when she miscalculated and she came upon a owner or a girl. So far, she had never been told or even seen, but dozens of times she had uncomfortably close encounters. There came a day when she felt it was time to expand her reach. She considered going to Vivic or Gnesis but one night at the Eight Plate, she heard a tale of the Aaron ancestral tomb, an ancient tomb filled with traps and possessing hundreds of years of Aaron family's treasures. The idea of breaking the spell of the Aaron tomb and gaining the fortune within appealed to chance, but facing the guardians was outside of her experience. While she was considering her options, she saw her still more spy sitting at a table nearby by himself as usual. He was a huge brute of a Briton who had a reputation as a gentle eccentric, a great warrior who had gone mad and paid more attention to the voices in his head than to the world around him. If she must have a partner in this enterprise, Chance decided this man would be perfect. He will not demand or understand the concept of getting an equal share of the bounty. If worse came to worse, he will not be missed if the inhabitants of the Aaron tomb were too much for him. Or if Chance found his company tiresome and elected to leave him behind. Elstir, I don't think we ever met, but my name is Mindwa, she said, approaching the table. I am fancying a trip to the Heron Ancestral Tomb. If you think you could handle the monsters, I could take care of unlocking doors and popping traps. What do you think? The Breton took a moment to reply, as if considering the conceal of the voices in his head. Finally, he nodded his head in the affirmative mumbling, yes, 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 proper rock, hot steel, cheating, walls beyond doors, 53, two months and back. Splendid, said Chance, not the least but half by his rumbling. We leave early tomorrow. When Chance met her still the next morning, he was wearing cheating armor and had armed himself with an unusual blade that glowed faintly of enchantment. As they began their trek, she tried to engage him in conversation, but his responses were so nonsensical that she quickly abandoned the attempts. A sudden rainstorm swelled over the plain, dousing them, but as she was wearing no armor and her steel was wearing sleek sheeting, their progress was not impeded. Into the dark recesses of the errant tomb, they did. Her instincts had been correct. They made very good partners. She recognized the ancient snap wire traps, their falls, and brittle bags before they were triggered, and cracked all manners of lock. Simple tumbler, combination, twisted tops, double catch, varieties from antiquity with no modern names, rusty heaps that would have been dangerous to open even if one possessed the actual key.
a stir for his part slew scores of bizarre fans, the likes of which chance a city girl had never seen before. His enchanted blade spell of fire was particularly effective against the frost actions. He even saved her when she lost her footing and nearly plummeted into a shadowy crack in the floor. Not to hurt herself, he said, his face showing genuine concern. There are walls beyond doors and 53 drain ring two months and back. Prop a rock, come, Mother Jens. Jens had not been listening to much of her still babbling, but when he said Jens, she was startled. She had introduced herself to him as Minva. Could it be that the peasants were right and that when madmen spoke, they were talking to the Deidre Prince Shegorat who gave them advice and information beyond their kin? Oh, was it rather more sensibly that Ulstir was merely repeating what he heard tell of the Balmora when in recent years chance had become synonymous with lockpicking. As the two continued, Chen's thought of Earl Steele's mumblings. He had said cheating when they met as if it had just occurred to him and the cheating armor that he wore had proven useful. Likewise, hot steel. What could war beyond doors mean? Or two months and back. What number it? 53. The notion that Earthia possesses need secret knowledge about her and the tomb they were in began to unearth chance. She made up her mind then to abandon her companion once the treasure had been found. He had cut through the living and undead guardians of the dungeon. If she merely left by the path, they had entered it, she would be safe without a defender. One phrase he said made perfect sense to her. Drain ring. At one of the manors in Balmora, she had picked up a ring purely because she thought it was pretty. It was not until later that she discovered that it would be used to sap other people's vitality. Could her still be aware of this? Would it be taken by surprise if she used it on him? She formulated a plan on how best to desert the Briton as they continued down the hall. Abruptly, the passage ended with a large metal door, secured by a golden lock. Using her pick, Chen snapped away the two tumblers and bolt, and swung the door open. The treasure of the errant tomb was within. Chance quietly slipped her glove off her hand, exposing the ring as she stepped into the room. There were 53 bags of gold within. As she turned, the door closed between her and the Breton. On her side, it did not resemble a door anymore, but a wall, wall beyond doors. For many days, Chance screamed and screamed as she tried to find a way out of the room. For some days after that, she listened duly to the laughter of Shegorat within her own head. Two months later, when her steel returned, she was dead. He used the rock to prop open the door and remove the gold. 